Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A jam-packed day in Metro Detroit. Fans and racers take over downtown Detroit for day two of the Detroit Grand Prix. It's the second year that the race is on the streets of downtown. That comes as pride celebrations get underway in Ferndale. The street fair bringing thousands to the city to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Pamela Osborne. And I'm Wolf Jones. We'll get to the Pride festivities in just a minute. But first, we're highlighting day two of the Detroit Grand Prix weekend. Race fans got their fill today of all the excitement and the noise that comes with the race. Yeah, Priya Man spoke with first timers, tourists and lifelong fans. We are right on the pit lane as close to the action as it gets and take a look at some of these sweet viewing spots. You've got the grandstands over there and right over there. If we pan over, look at all those racing fans that have packed the parking the garage. That was just they were so fast. It's Courtney and Charles Butler's first time at the Detroit Grand Prix. I wasn't expecting them to be hitting them corners like this. It was a good time though. I was surprised when I got over here and saw it like that they were doing all of this stuff. How does it make yeah. you feel as a Detroiter? Nice. I'm glad people get to see this about Detroit. The fan experience at Hart Plaza had something for everyone. This father and son duo got a sense of the pressure when every second counts. Do a pit stop for somebody, see who wins. How'd you do? Oh, well, he right beat here. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. So what's the secret? The dad winner, right? Eh? The dad one. Just yeah. experience, you know. They came over from Windsor, like many other tourists, flocking to Detroit, spending time and money in the Motor City. They take downtown and turn it into a racetrack. Well, they're they're keen a map. Everybody has a map. Fast cars, loud noises. And yeah, I just, just love the whole atmosphere, the community, the crowd. The Detroit Grand Prix has returned to the streets of downtown for the second straight year. The 1.7 mile track was buzzing on Saturday. To have the Cadillacs, the Corvettes, the two different classes competing, hybrid technology, there's going to be a lot of action. For avid race fans, there's really no words to describe the adrenaline rush. You have to take in all the sights and sounds here in person. Every time Every time I see this sort of stuff, I just go, I, I don't know how they do it. It's so many things have to work right. So many people have to believe in this to make it happen. That it's it's really cool to see that it's here. At Heart Plaza, I'm Priya Man, Local 4. Thank you, Priya. Now let's talk about what the fans had to cheer about today. Hobie Arteague joins us live for that. And Hobie, today was all about the qualifying, right? A lot of the drivers were saying that the track is the same layout, but much faster this year because they grinded the track in some areas to make it quicker. And we saw that today. Well, the main event is on Sunday, but a major part of the weekend happening this afternoon in the Grand Prix. Cars racing through those streets, all trying to get the top spot in starting for Sunday's race. Colton Herta made it to the final six in qualifying. And that's where he took over, making it around the 1.7 mile track in just over a minute to win pole position. In practice this morning, he also set the record for the fastest lap ever at this format of the Detroit Grand Prix. But he was fast when it mattered in qualifying, getting pole for the first time all year. I mean, it feels great. It feels great for the team, for myself. Um, Gamebridge Honda was super fast. And so to be able to, to get that lap in, it's a very rewarding track to be able to get to pole get the pole so um, feel great. I think it'll be similar to to last year. Um, if anything, maybe worse. The tires are a little bit harder to come up to temp, so it makes it a little bit sketchier on cold tires. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, yeah, it could be a crazy one. And a lot of the drivers were mentioning how tight the course is. So you factor in that speed and how close proximity the cars are to each other should make for an exciting one on Sunday. But also the IMSA series racing today. We'll have those highlights coming up in sports. All right. Thank you, Hobie. Our Grand Prix coverage continues over on Click on Detroit. There you can find everything you need to know if you're heading downtown for the final day of the race tomorrow. Find parking information, Sunday schedule of events, and see what's new this year. You can find it all under the Sports tab. Pride Month has begun and a massive celebration is taking place in Ferndale. The annual family friendly street fair brings thousands downtown every year. Jacqueline Francis joins us now with a look at some of the fun out there. Jacqueline. Hey Pam, this is living up to its reputation. Ferndale Pride is the biggest open to the public Pride Fest in Michigan. 
you take a look around, there is so much to see and do. Of course, June 1st marks the first day of Pride Month. It's when thousands of people descend to downtown Ferndale. There's music, food, dancing, and more. We talked to a couple people out here today about what makes this festival so special. I love the atmosphere, I love the people. You get to be free, happy, any worries that you have, you let them go and just come and enjoy yourself. I love the fact that there's all these different tents and I can talk to so many different people. I've been able to talk to people in healthcare, which are able to help me with like transitions and stuff, um, as well as um, people that are helping me with uh, therapy too. There's still more fun to be had here. The vendors are open until 8, and then the entertainment goes on until 10. Reporting live from downtown Ferndale, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Looks like a blast. Thank you, Jacqueline. Whether you're hanging out at the racetrack or taking part in the Pride festivities, today was a great day for it all. But the clouds, they're now rolling in. Ron Hillier joins us now. And Ron, some rain showers could be coming our way. Why don't you break it all down for That's us? That's right, and we have some of those rain showers already moving in onto the west side of town out there, Pamela and Will. This is what we're seeing. The rain showers moving in from the west. You'll see that stark line right there of the shower activity now moving into western portions of Livingston and Washtenaw counties. You're also seeing that rain around the Adrian area. So. This is going to be moving into our area over the next couple of hours, and there is a lot of it that has to make its way through. So it's going to be a wet, rainy night through the rest of the night and into the part of tomorrow morning. Now, I know there's a lot of activities, including the start of the Grand Prix back tomorrow morning. So there's a lot of people watching the weather conditions. We'll start seeing the rain showers first in Ann Arbor before we see it over in Detroit. Those showers right there are going to be making their way into downtown as well. You see a lot of people down at Hart Plaza. When it comes to the temperatures, they range from the lower to mid 70s in most places. 77 right now in Detroit on the east side. Now, we are going to be tracking that rain tonight. It is going to be wet. The rain showers lasting into tomorrow morning and more of it on the way for next week. I'll tell you what the rest of this weekend looks like and how to plan for next week. Police in Oakland County are searching for a teenage girl who has been missing since Thursday. 15 year old Callie Williams, a Pontiac High School student, was last seen at the school. Officials say she was marked present in all of her classes but never returned home from school. Her mother told officers that the teen recently asked if she could stay with some friends. She met at school, but her mom told her no. Detectives have checked the homes of her friends. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is pushing back on a peace proposal laid out by President Biden. Today, Netanyahu said in a permanent ceasefire in Gaza was a non-starter until Israel's conditions for ending the war are met. A statement from the Prime Minister's office said the destruction of Hamas and the release of all hostages would need to happen before a ceasefire can begin. Biden's plan would happen in three phases, with the first involving a six-week ceasefire and a withdrawal of Israeli troops from population centers in Gaza. Still ahead tonight, we head south of the border as Mexico is set to have the largest elections in its history. Meet the two women who are leading the race to be president. And young Lions fans get the chance to train with the Lions player, see what they learned on the field and off.